Whilst we're doing that, we're going to do a few speeches. I mean, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad because um, you've only got me and Carl to put up with this afternoon. We've got no <laughs> and dads and people like that. So um, just just me and Carl. And I've had to change my speech somewhat this afternoon because of what happened earlier on. <laughs> now, I've been doing some research on a groom's speech. And one thing that when I've looked on the internet is they're all sure about. There should definitely be a beginning and there should definitely be an end. And the bit in the middle should be as short as bloody possible. <laughs> <laughs> With that in mind, God, my wife... Pauline and I would first of all like to propose a toast to all our friends here who have made our day so special to us. So would you like to take up a glass? And may our house always be too small to hold all our friends. <laughs> now, cheers mate. Lovely. So keeping on the theme of keeping things short, I'm going to give some thank yous today, and the one that just interrupted me is going to get the first thank you. <laughs> Peter we've known ever since we started dancing, and he takes some amazing photographs, usually of ladies when their skirts are high up round their ears, and they're lovely shots, lovely action shots, but he's smashing. Peter, would you like to come up here please? We've got something for you, and my wife would love to give you this present. Somebody take a photograph, for God's sake. <laughs> two people that I've been coming out today are my two ushers, David and Tyro. And because I arrived a little bit late, um, and I will speak about that in a minute, David, would you like to come up, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. And Tyro, would you like to come up, please? Oh, thank, thank you very much for all your beautifully you. controlled well, well, music. Well, 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 well. Now, we've only got one family member here in this room today, and that is Pauline's cousin, and she's very kindly video, but she's a bit of a shy person, so I think Pauline better take her present to her and Kevin, and thank you very, very much for the video, thank you Kevin for putting it on the now we've already given Josie a present she had to shoot off because she has to walk the doggy. Oh, she really loves her doggy. It's been in the doors too long today, so she shot home. And she's gone to walk her doggy, and then she'll meet up with us again at 8 o'clock at Shaw. So, moving on, we've got, oh, the admin, I knew I was going to say this bloody word, John, <laughs> who, John, thank you very much for giving her away. Can I give her back then? <laughs> 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 John's also doing our music here tonight. So I hope you're all going to get on the dance floor later on. <coughs> and the last thank you, although I don't know why I'm doing this. Oh. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story later on. Oh, I'll leave it to my best man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he won't mention it. <laughs> 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 Two 
to my wife, Pauline, who <clears throat> moved me to tears, and I'm going to cry again, <laughs> when she walked into the wedding room this afternoon. I, I, I thought you looked absolutely beautiful, stunning, yeah. and I'm so happy that a year ago or more, you said yes to me when I asked you to marry me. And today you fulfilled that dream of mine to be your husband and you to be my wife and you look absolutely stunning darling. And the pictures we had taken earlier on, they're going to be absolutely beautiful. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I'm going to just relate a little story now. now this, is not, this is not about my best man yet. Not yet. <laughs> I thought we'd like to know how we actually met Pauline and I. Now we have sort of bumped in uh, paths across here and there, but no more than just a person around a club or on a bus or whatever. Because actually I can go back to the 70s when I first saw Pauline getting on my number one bus in Lintot Avenue, which is where her dad lived. So it goes back that far that I knew of this lady all the way back then. Now, I ended up at the other bowls club, Preston Bowls Club, to go and do some coaching. Now what it was, I wasn't actually coaching there, but I had a few of my students who were taking their level two exams. Now, the arrangement was, not with Pauline, but the arrangement was with Wendy Fizell, who the bowling fraternity will know at the time was the county coach. And Wendy was actually helping me get on with my senior le uh, level, and I said to her, look, I'll buy you lunch, we go down Preston Club, we we'll see how the students are doing, and we'll have lunch together. Yeah, that's fine, Mike. Well, two days earlier, she says, sorry, Mike, can't come. Um, family's turned up out of the blue, so I'm stuck here for the weekend. I said, no problem, Wendy. I says, fine. I says, we'll catch up another time. So there's me indoors, kicking my heels, wondering what the hell I'm going to do on Sunday morning. And I thought, bugger it, I'll go down Preston Club anyway. So in I walked to Preston Club and spoke to a load of people, see how my students were getting on in their coaching, they were doing well. And I'm sat there chatting to anybody that came in. Well, this young lady came in about half past 12, about half 11. Half 11 she popped in. Now by this time I sort of had about three, four cups of tea, which is not a problem. You might think, why is he talking about three, four cups of tea? Well, I've got a serious heart condition. I have to take a thing called a Fusimide tablet. And it's a really strong one. And it empties me of all my water. <laughs> so whenever I drink, I have to be very close to a loo. Because every 15 to 20 minutes, I have to pop off to the loo. Which is no problem, because when I'm around clubs, and I always think about where I'm going. I'm going to go there, I'm going to go here. It doesn't really matter. As long as there's a loo going, I always plan my day out where the public lavatories are. <laughs> <laughs> All get planned out where the public lavatories are. Okay, so I'm down at Preston Club, Pauline walks in and we get chatting. And she comes up and pulls up a seat and I said, we got chatting, we were chatting for a while, I said we'd like to have lunch with me. She said, I'd love to have lunch with you, so we had lunch. Several more drinks later, and we were still having more fluid inside me. And she said, I'd really like to get out of this place. I said, yeah. I said, well all my lot have gone through their coaching now. I said, we can shoot off. I said, where would you like to go? I said, I don't know. I said, okay, well, I says, I'll meet you outside. She didn't want to be seen leaving the club with me. So she left the club on her own and I sort of came out of the club five or so minutes later to pick her up on the corner. And before I went, I went to the loo. <laughs> Finally got me into the car because I hadn't got a clue where she was. She said she was going to be by the garage. I went past the garage, she went, went all the way around, back round again, back round again, and there she was. I thought, oh, good. I thought she stood me up already. <laughs> but there she was. Okay, so off we went in the car, chatting away. I said, Where do you want to go? Well, I don't, actually, I don't mind going anywhere. Anywhere you want to, Mike. I said, Okay, safe bet, my hometown. I went over to Eastbourne. And I live, lived, not now, but I lived just by Prince's Park. So it's my old haunting grounds from the school <coughs> child. I knew it like the back of my hand. Public toilet, so I go. Public toilets. <laughs> See, I'm going to up here. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a 35 minute drive over to there. I'm breaking my neck by the time I get there. <laughs> so we've arrived and we got out of the car and there's a bit of an alleyway you have to go up to before you come into the lovely gardens. So 
walking along, not even holding a hand at this point, walking along and chatting away. And I'm sort of moving along at a fair pace, you know. <laughs> Come to the steps, I thought, well, oh, probably she's in my heels, I better help her down. And at that point, I took a pan and there was a spark there. And I never let go of it uh, for the rest of that day, basically. Oh, from the May 12th, so. And off we went. So we're going around the park, around the, the lake, and talking about my old haunts. And all the time, I'm taking them up round to the public toilet, which is around the back by the greens. <laughs> and I'm sort of getting really, really desperate by this point. I feel like I've got to go. And she says, well, Are you alright, Mark? I says, Yes, alright, I'm just going to use the public toilet. They closed the sodding thing. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They were doing a complete revamp, and I'm going, Where can I go? Where can I go? Where can I go? So I'm going, I'm sort of, and at this point, I says, well, She's walking down. I says, So I just walked down there. So it started walking back down towards the lake around this path. I says, Can you hang on there a minute? Now, bearing in mind, I'm trying to impress this woman. <laughs> and I'm jumping <coughs> behind the bush, and I says, I won't be a minute, I've got to go for a wee behind the bushes. She has the great pleasure in telling me whenever we walk round there now that that bush is now dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> after we uh, <coughs> relieved myself, I came out with a big smile on my face. She was killing herself. I thought this is impressive, isn't it? <laughs> so we've then walked up towards, I don't know if any of you know Princess Park, but you know, we started walking up towards the lifeboat station, the old lifeboat station. And uh, that's why I gave her a first kiss. I did ask her permission first. I said, can I give you a kiss? She says, of course you can. So I kissed. And they say there's always a spark, don't they, when you kiss somebody? But it was like the 5th of November. It was lovely, wasn't it? Well, I thought it was, anyway. not it? <laughs> <laughs> then we carried on walking, by which time I'm now getting desperate, believe it or not, to go to the loo again. So that's all right, because there's a loo just round by Splash Point, what we used to call the Splash Point. Splash point, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a pun actually, but it fits in nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. The loo was open, so that wasn't a problem. So off we went in there, and uh, and then we ended up walking up a little bit further and coming back down to the cafe. We had a nice scream, then came back to the cafe, didn't we? And I went to the loo again. And that's why my, my morning and afternoon with Pauline, spending my time rushing between loos. She must have wondered what the hell she was getting into, but she stuck with it. And of course, she's learnt over the last 15 months or more that planning is all important. <laughs> where are we going today, darling? <laughs> all right, where's the loose? <laughs> <laughs> and off we go. If the thing is, it's either that or I don't take the tablet, which is quite bad because the next day is twice as worse. <laughs> so that's what happens. So that's how I very first met Paulie. And that was more than 15 months ago. 16 months ago? 16, 16 months ago. I couldn't have been a happier man today to marry her. As you know, I was very moved and in tears. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. And uh, I'd just like to propose a toast to my wife, Pauline. Mm -hmm. To Pauline. <coughs> now that, ladies and gentlemen, was going to be the end of my speech. <laughs> and I was going to hand over to my best man at this point. But I thought, I'd just relate the story. Because <laughs> you won't mind. <laughs> now, I'm ex-military. I'm an ex-paratrooper. <laughs> and if anyone's been around me, they do tend to know that I tend to do things at a set time and in a place. And it, you know, it's, it's done. Boom, boom, boom. Planning. All important. Today was planned down to the last <laughs> finest detail. <laughs> Carl, come and pick Josie and Peter up at, what was it? It was 11.40. 11.40. Josie and Peter up at 11.40. Please take them back to my hand. And then you're, you're meant to be coming back to Ada to pick me up at 12.40 to get me back home so I could get my talks on. And then at 20 past one, to just gently and casually come down to the registry office and 15, 20 minutes to spare, greet my guests as they arrive, be the first one there, you know, greet them all as they arrive, you know. Didn't quite work out like that. <laughs> at 10 past one, 30 minutes after, he should have picked me up. Carl, where are you? I'm at your own, Mike. Carl, what are you doing at my own? Well, you said I had to be here. I said, no, Carl, 
You were meant to be at Ada 30 minutes ago. Oh shit, he says. <laughs> <laughs> From my home, by the way, to Ada is about 20 minutes journey time. And that's pushing it in the car. It is. <laughs> now, the car got back to Ada at 1.32. I looked at my watch. Mm. He pulled up at 1.32. I thought, mm. God, oh. he's then taking me back home. We planned it out as, as we did. I phoned up Paul and said, leave. I said, what are you going to do? Leave. Because I'm going to be rushing in. You just leave. Get out. Why? I said, please just leave the house. So she's left. Well, he didn't. He was still there because he turned up. I didn't know. I had my eyes covered. I said, he says she's there. I said, oh, I don't want to stay up. Like that. Anyway, he's picked me up at 32 minutes past. One. Hey, there's any kids on this? No, no, no. <laughs> 32 minutes past one. Right. Yeah. This, we this got back. Was me something. <laughs> we got back home. They had left. I rushed in, and I had to remember all these things that I was going to do at a nice leisure. You, know, you, leisure <laughs> you pick up this, and you pick up that, and you know. It's a leisurely thing, isn't it? You know, it's a special day, exactly. You get dressed and you look nice, and you put a bit of perfume on and whatever, you know. You comb your hair, you know. Oh, sorry, I'm not here. But, you know, 32 minutes. 32 minutes past. Now, I got into that house. At, it must have been quarter two. Mm -hmm. Easily quarter two, just after quarter ten two. Yeah, just after, just before ten to two. Yeah, ten to two. Mm. Job to I got in there, put my put my trousers on, put my shoes on, didn't lace them up, chuck my shirt on, didn't button it up, chuck my waistcoat and watch it and tie over my over my watch and belt down the stairs outside into his car, virtually naked. <laughs> <laughs> I then got dressed on the way to the registry office. Oh. Now. To be fair to Carl, his job is to get me there on time. He got me there two minutes past two. So from Ada to my home, down to the register, office, with all the traffic, 30 minutes. Now that's pretty bloody good going. <laughs> what I am, I have to say, I am delighted these two are together. I really am. Um, I'm not going to read anything out. I'm just going to say how much they are in love. I was very privileged that Mike told me in confidence at the beginning of when they first met. So I was the first person to know. And the reason that is, um, I know not everyone's bowlers here, but in bowls club, gossip goes everywhere. So if the gossip had gone all around all Sussex, it would have given you no chance really to uh, have time to romance. So Mike said to me, I'm going to tell you. He said, I'm going out with Paul. I said, really? He said, you know He said, but don't tell anybody. And I said, Mike, you have got me. I will not tell a soul. My lips are sealed. For a price. <laughs> for a drink for a whole month. <laughs> Mike, what do you want to drink? Oh, they have a shandy. <laughs> do you want to get them or shall I get them? Pauline! <laughs> he was brilliant. He was brilliant. <laughs> But I really love the way they met, and we've had these conversations over a period of months, haven't we, how you met, and uh, I'm so glad that Wendy stood this guy up at the president club. I um, think he stood up. Well, <laughs> well, did she bring you to council? Yes. Mike got stood up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the best thing that happened. Now, Mike has said about his bus trips and when he came out of the forces that he, he drove a bus and it was the actual last stop that his dad's held. What he didn't tell you, that on his days off, he still run that bike so all the way to that bus stop. He doesn't get a glimpse of you. And it was that, it's quite an interesting story, actually, because... Pauline has confessed to me, you know, that she fancied you like mad, and you have confessed to me that you fancy Pauline like mad, what is understandable. But circumstances in life, you were all in different type of bubbles, you know, like this. It's a bit like that film sliding doors, you go right or go left. So the circumstances weren't ever there, but they were on that particular day at, at Preston Club, and it joined you together. So that was an absolute magical moment, and you've never looked back. Uh, at all. 
But in it, my passion would have always been jiving, really. I loved Oxford so much, and I gave it up for 20 odd years. And then I always remember the conversation when Mike said to me, We're going to go jiving. I said, I tell you something, you're a work one way. You either go jiving and you'll go for six lessons and then you'll drift away from it, or you'll go jiving, you know, French jiving, <coughs> I said, and you'll be absolutely addicted to it. And they are addicted to it. And it's great because it's one of the most great cardiovascular exercises done. It really is fantastic. But they're not just addicted to jiving, they're addicted to each other. Mm -hmm. So that is it, gents. Can you please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you please give a toast to the happy cup? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 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 Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Can I please, 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 please ask you to write something in our wedding book? Each and every one of you, not as a, a couple, each individual, <laughs> please write something in our book. Because we'd like to treasure that. You are our friends, you are the people that we think of most. So please write something in the book for us. We'd be privileged to have it. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.